The Eden Project is about improving Europe's resilience to chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear threats. This video will take you on a journey through Ukraine, Poland, Italy, Spain and France as we see some of the latest tools that can be used to counter some of those CBRNE threats. We travel into the hot zone in Chernobyl to see robots which can be fitted with sensors for detection and sampling during radiological or nuclear incidents. Drones that can provide an eye in the sky for command and control as well as mapping contaminated areas and first responders can stay in touch with the latest smartphone applications. There's an explosive start for the tabletop exercise in Poland where tool providers and end users came together to work through scenarios about a radiological device being detonated in a city centre and a nuclear leak at a rural power station. As well as tracking plumes and deciding whether to evacuate, delegates were also put through their paces in a series of simulated media interviews and press conferences. In Italy, we went inside a bologna and salami factory to look at the tools that will help protect the meat industry from bioterrorism and food contamination. And in Spain, a simulated attack on a sugar factory reinforced the message for the food industry to move from a culture of food safety to one of food defence. In France, we see firefighters putting the tools to the test during a simulated attack on a chemical plant and a terrorist dirty bomb on a train. Information from various devices can be overlaid on pictures provided by a drone to give command and control an overview of the entire event and allow them to track first responders. Our travels end in Italy as medical services are put through their paces dealing with a mass casualty simulation in Rome. But the Eden journey doesn't stop here, as there are clear aims for this EU FP7 funded research programme. The problem at the moment within Europe is that um, the whole CBRN scenario is fragmented. All the actors are fragmented and there is not enough cooperation and communication between the various actors. And bringing people together to an event like that allows all those actors to share their knowledge and improve the situation. The framework was developed after an extensive gap analysis and prioritisation process. We do prioritise by asking end users, first of all, what's important to them, what would they like to have. And we also prioritise by asking experts, asking the advisory board that we have in Eden. And uh, we also do um, an overview of the previous projects and historical events in order to prioritise what is most acute to solve. Every demonstration and every exercise was followed with an extensive evaluation process. There are focus groups of um, a committee of evaluators um, and also questionnaires that are completed by the participants. The results from the evaluation groups and the, the, the focus discussions uh, and the questionnaires are then assessed um, and reported um, in a final report for the demonstration. Those reports provide recommendations and lessons learned which we can then apply to future demonstrations. One of the lasting legacies of this project will be the Eden Toolbox and the Eden Store which can be found on the Eden website. These provide a whole range of tools and services for dealing with a wide variety of CBRNE threats. So what was the verdict of observers and end users involved in this project? Well, I think one of the main benefits for me is the realisation that lots of people in lots of different countries are thinking about the same problems that they've identified and it's an ideal opportunity for people to, to share their ideas on some common problems. It's really useful for me as an end user to see some new technologies and some new equipment being used in the field in a real life scenario. And then what I've particularly enjoyed and appreciated is being able to give direct feedback to the manufacturers and the software developers about how they can best exploit the markets that are available to them and how they can sort of tweak and adjust what they've got to meet end user needs. A very interesting project. We've been part of the project since the beginning and the results are very useful to end users and bringing new items to the market so hopefully we'll be doing much better after this project. If you would like more details about this demonstration or any Eden activity then please go to the Eden website or contact one of the officials listed here.
The exclusion zone at Chernobyl provided a unique environment for the second phase of the Eden large-scale radiological and nuclear demonstration. This was the phase where the consequences of a nuclear accident would spread outside the facility, with international effects which demanded a Europe-wide response. The event was framed by the ghost town of Pripyat and organised by the State Agency of Ukraine for the exclusion zone management and the International Chernobyl Center. Participants could test and validate Eden's store and its tools and toolboxes in an environment contaminated with real radionuclides. Working together with end users such as rescue services, police, fire and specialist CBRN and hazmat experts. You know, in my opinion, the first most advantage of the of the each exercise which can be done here is to do something with the real polluted area. So it's very unique uh, for any kind of activity when we use the new equipment, new tools, new technologies to check it not in the artificial uh, environment, uh, which is not correspond to the real threat, radiological threat, but uh, when we use the real one. Teams were taught how to use cold, warm and hot zones for applying PPE, personal protective equipment. Advice from hot zone solutions, such as walking in single file, showed how to minimize the risk of contamination by sticking to safe areas in the middle of the road. The scenario involved area monitoring, detection of radiation threat, identifying contamination sources and zones, area reconnaissance and sampling, analyzing samples, decontamination and waste management. Special test zones with hotspots were identified so people could demonstrate handheld detection systems. At the moment we're um, connecting our equipment up onto the same network um, and then we will be able to track the location of first responders that are using our equipment. Unmanned aerial systems, UAVs or drones, were used to carry different types of sensor and identification equipment. The key word for this Eden demonstration is integration. The demonstration reflected real life in that some teams could not make the event, so other teams, like drone ops, had to improvise and work with new partners to fly their detection equipment. Special test zones were also identified for robots to validate sampling equipment. Again, collaboration was vital, as the two companies providing robots had to work with international partners to carry their equipment into the hot zone. This highlights how radiation levels can change dramatically in a short distance. The roadway is perfectly safe, around 2.7 microsieverts. Venture 3 metres ahead and the level rises to 4.9 microsieverts. And where the robot goes, levels can vary from 20 to 80 microsieverts. I hope we've been able to instill in the participants an awareness that safety when you are in a radioactive environment is paramount. And I think we've succeeded in that. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback from the participants already. And it is, especially with radiation, which you don't see, smell, feel or hear, it is very important that people take the safety aspect into account. The next day at the Chernobyl Center, teams could discuss their findings and share experience. The uh, uh, center, it was um, a clear zone with a radiation background which close to the normal radiation background. And then again, this, this one was, was right, uh, and it was about 65 microsievert hotspot. We've got another one that is adjusted so you can see, because that area was you, around 5 to Yeah, you can, you can, yeah. you can, you can, when you change the scale so you'll get a bigger representation of the, of the whole area. Yeah, so I was talking about one of the robots that we have yesterday. So the robot itself was a sampling robot or a mobile sampling robot, as it's called in questionnaires and uh, throughout the project. So if we just play now, um, what you'll see is the head cam, and what you're getting is instantaneous dose response. We set a 50 uh, microsievert an hour contour that we had all the alarms going off so that we could set and map that. Two detector units combined to uh, Panasonic tough pad uh, combined data against GPS and we integrate in four second intervals and we send all of the data to Ridgeback Center. This is a vital process for the validation and evaluation stages of the project, which is looking to see an improvement in integration of systems and tools that will go into the Eden store and toolbox of toolboxes. 
Identifying radionuclides and sources of contamination are essential if large populations need to be evacuated in the event of a real radiological or nuclear incident. One of the strengths of EU projects like Eden is the ability to bring together top experts from so many different countries. The Ukraine demonstration was privileged to have Dr. Yevgeny Rizhaiko involved as he was part of the Red Army team that flew above the Chernobyl reactor in a helicopter to take radiation samples 30 years ago, a task that could now be completed by a UAV, so he's able to take a considered view and compare how things have changed since 1986. First of all, uh, uh, the political changes, if, if I can make the statement, because uh, that time was the time of Soviet Union, which is a command type of uh, policy for everything. So from, uh, from this perspective, it was a bit easier to operate when everything was in one hand control. Uh, but uh, 30 years ago in Chernobyl was absolutely different tools uh, for detection, for protection of people, for the initial uh, medical treatment compared with the current time. Uh, even, even so, uh, uh, current equipment, which uh, currently use equipment for the radiological uh, uh, or nuclear disasters, are very much advanced since uh, uh, 1986. Uh, still, uh, they are uh, represented as uh, simple tools not combined in a specialized specific purpose uh, toolboxes. Uh, Eden project is uh, exactly uh, going to uh, the fill this gap when uh, uh, development of individual uh, suppliers and uh, research and development uh, facilities should be uh, integrated to each other and the European projects are specifically uh, purpose for this. If you would like more details about this demonstration or any Eden activity, then please go to the Eden website or contact one of the officials listed here. The Fire Service School in Warsaw was the setting for an Eden radiological and nuclear tabletop exercise linked to the Pripyat demonstration in Ukraine. The school was the Warsaw focal point for some frantic activity during the Solidarność Revolution in 1981. But 36 years on, the Polish greeting by an Englishman was much calmer. Dzień dobry Państwu. Jestem Stephen Burch. Pracuję dla BAE Systems w Wielkiej Brytanii. Będzie mówić o ocenie. Nie wiem dużo polskiego, więc będę kontynuować po angielsku. The first day was devoted to media and communications training for the delegates who'd be providing information to the public during the exercise. The difference is that this is a demonstration today and the key task is for them to demonstrate their tools. The second day, tool providers and end users came from a variety of countries. So what was it the organisers and observers were looking for? Today I was looking uh, to see what the potential was for the tools to be integrated for even Eden and whether that could actually improve crisis management situations and also to see how people react to the information and whether they could use the information to make more informed decisions. To uh, check if our uh, Eden tools uh, cooperate with themselves and to check if our scenario is uh, good enough to, to show the possibilities offering from, the, from, the, from these tools. Looking mostly of course for problems, seeing whether lines of communication are working correctly, because as an observer you're not part of a single team but you can flow freely between the teams, which allows you to get an indication of how everything is working. And there you can learn quite a lot from being able to do that. Two of the most important factors are timings. 
Firstly, the time from our first knowledge of the incident and making a decision that it's necessary to evacuate people. And secondly, the time taken from our initial knowledge to information about the nature and scale of the event and uh, advice to the public actually being broadcast on the mass media. The scenario for the exercise was based on a simulated terrorist threat to explode a dirty bomb in the capital of the fictional country called Dunkelstein. Dramatic news from the Dunkelstein capital, Tarnia. A car bomb has just exploded and there are reports that this might have been a dirty bomb, as threatened by the so-called terrorist group Partnership of Strong and Weak. It appears that police had identified a suspect van in a derelict warehouse. Specialist bomb disposal officers were seen approaching the vehicle to make a preliminary investigation and they called for a robot to carry out a more detailed investigation. Emergency responders who were wearing dosimeters which detect radiation immediately reported that their personal alarms had sounded causing them to pull back from the area. At this stage we believe no one has been injured by the explosion but the extent of the radioactive cloud released by the dirty bomb is not known. However, it's clear that this incident marks a new wave of terrorism in Europe. Authorities have feared a dirty bomb attack for some time. Now, those fears have become reality. Ian Cameron, CWW News. As the exercise scenario unfolded, tool providers and end users were put through their paces, tracking plumes and detecting contamination through computer modelling. One of the, the things I think we interested to come out the exercise and what we observe is the people tend to trust the tools immediately for what comes out or trust the media reports that come out and one thing you haven't seen necessarily during the exercise is whether people actually question the results of the tools or question the results of the media. That concern soon became a reality as one set of data suggested people should remain inside while another set suggested evacuation was necessary. No, they are still not coherent? No. no. Oh, and do you know, do you have an idea what should be done? We try. I'm trying. Worst case is there was a fault by the users. <laughs> okay, but then switching the sides and repeating this. So let, let's play this way. We are switching the teams to repeat the analysis and we'll see if we have again have this kind of discussions. And for the media team, this meant they had to decide what information to give the public. Very confusing, people are saying, get out of there, we don't do this. Uh, so we need public statement also on Facebook. Exactly, so we need, we need clear guidance. Is it, what is the policy at the moment? Stay in place or evacuate here? Like any good exercise, the real learning points come when things go wrong. Yes, indeed. Uh, we have received some uh, contradictory results from different uh, tools, which is also one of the uh, reasons why this type of experiments are conducted. And uh, this also shows how difficult it is for the end users, uh, for the actual uh, rescue services, to take decisions uh, on the basis of the initial assumptions, initial uh, uh, data uh, which are put into the systems. In that case, uh, there could be a very minor difference in the system. System. or that could be uh, simply the different legal standard uh, which uh, in one country could be still considered as the safe uh, environment or at least safe to evacuate when in another country the recommendation would be to stay indoor uh, to remain sheltered. There was also a simulated press conference following the second scenario where an earthquake damaged a nuclear power station. Officials had to face some tricky questions. In the evacuation tomorrow, will pets and livestock be slaughtered? I think that uh, uh, pets and uh, will not be evacuated with people. So how did the observers and organisers think the day had gone? I can see the potential, I can see how these tools could be integrated together. Uh, there are some issues on um, whether you can actually use some of the tools in real time, whether you need prep whether it be more suitable for preparedness and I've also been impressed on the media side on how people take the information, how they use the information and feed that back into the population. We aim at making this demonstration uh, realistic, as close to reality uh, as it is uh, possible. 
uh, we are trying to make an experience in which uh, the participants can truly immerse themselves and uh, feel like uh, their country is truly in danger. Uh, to achieve this, we adapted uh, serious games, the serious gaming concept. And the next day, at an evaluation session, delegates could give their feedback on the exercise. When we design tools, um, it's not operational. When we are on, in operation, we discover a new way to use the tools. And it is fantastic because you, we, 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 we discover improvements. I think it's much easier to communicate directly on an interpersonal level, simply meeting up, sorting things out. Well, communication does limit us in this regard. I thought there was really good, valuable lessons from media training and the way you integrated it into the exercise was really, really good. And my belief is that many of the people who are involved in those media teams and in that training will take away very valuable lessons for their, their working life long after the, the exercise. I thought it was very good. If you would like more details about this exercise or any Eden activity, then please go to the Eden website or contact one of the officials listed here. Ferrari and Lamborghini two famous names associated with the Bologna region in Italy. Names that say quality. And the region is also famous for the quality of its bologna and salami meat products. So this was the ideal area for Eden delegates to come together for a large-scale demonstration about protecting the meat industry against food contamination. At the opening presentations, there were clear messages from the organizers. The need to move from a culture of food safety to food defense. We have to start to consider the food uh, industry, the food chain, as a critical infrastructure, as uh, uh, is considered in the U.S., because the problem of intentional contamination is a, here a really uh, big problem. And till now, we, we, we have been very, very lucky that uh, no one has uh, succeeded in, uh, in the contamination of the food industry and the food products. At the hotel, exhibitors could show some of the latest tools for detecting contamination within the food chain. The French Army came to us and asked us to develop an instrument capable to collect all the particles in the air, such as bacteria and viruses. While other systems not only detect people, they spot any abnormal behaviour. And some, like this system, can help security by reading the pattern of veins inside someone's finger. What you are seeing may seem simple today, but actually it's very difficult to take one individual and match the data in a big database in one second. That is what is very special about this, the speed at which it operates. The tools that we are um, selected to study in the Eden projects are tools that were developed in different sectors and we are just trying to adjust and to bring them into the food sector. Ethics is an important thread that runs through all the Eden demonstrations. It's to ensure that um, we don't do anything in the project or the tools that we use won't impinge on people's personal rights and that the data we collect will be uh, stored in such a way that uh, again we comply with data protection acts and things like that. A simulated news report highlighted the way a small attack on one meat factory in Italy could escalate into a major international incident. Hospital authorities say 21 people, including five children, are now being treated here for this mystery illness. Their symptoms include nausea, high temperature and diarrhea, and the disease is difficult to treat. But this is just one hospital in Bologna. Many more are being treated in other hospitals across Europe, including France, Luxembourg, Denmark and Austria. We understand that someone managed to penetrate the production line two weeks ago and contaminate bologna meat products by adding a biological agent to the food chain. In the UK, where beef cattle were infected with BSE, which was difficult to detect, the cost ran into millions of pounds and it took the industry nearly 10 years to recover. 
but experts say the Bologna attack could cost Italy far more than the UK BSE crisis. Leading supermarkets in France, Germany, the UK and Netherlands have removed all Italian meat products from their shelves as a precautionary measure. End users and observers could then see some of the tools being deployed in the field at the Bologna factory. This is a tool for detection of biological and uh, chemical contamination on uh, solid surfaces using fluorescence technology. So you will be placing it onto a contaminated or decontaminated surface and then you will press a button and in 20 seconds in 20 seconds there will be so you see a measurement is in process uh, there is some uh, biological contamination on the small plate there and we expect to see that this goes red the ending of the system is for, for final use of the customer simply to start the process. The next day there were demonstrations of tools at the salami factory. For this Eden project we have uh, been using uh, two different technologies, the GCMS and also LIP technology. The demonstrations over the two days covered the key components of food defence, prevention, preparedness and response. Being able to distinguish between friendly and harmful bacteria is vital in the salami business because a lot of the flavour is created by specially cultivated bacteria within the factory. So what did the end users and observers think of the demonstrations? Yes, it was very good, very interesting, and uh, especially the, the tools and the different tools which had been explained very well. Myself, I did not know anything about the food process, but we, we find the same methodology of uh, analysis that uh, we can find in any other sweat. It was very useful and to see the tools in action I think that's useful for the end users particularly but also for us working in the project. Regarding the tools themselves, uh, very, most of them are very uh, promising and as we got the chance to hear it from uh, our end users invited for the event, uh, they are very interested to see them on the market. So. I think we should treat this demonstration as a success. If you would like more details about this demonstration or any Eden activity, then please go to the Eden website or contact one of the officials listed here. Zamora province was the setting for the Eden large-scale food demonstration in northwest Spain. During the initial briefing, delegates were shown a film which highlighted the problems of food contamination. The food chain is vulnerable to accidental and deliberate contamination. The effects can be sudden, severe and long-lasting. In 2008, an estimated 300,000 children fell ill in China. 54,000 were hospitalized and six victims died after milk powder was contaminated with melamine, a poisonous industrial chemical added to artificially boost protein levels for profit, a fraudulent practice known as EMA, economically motivated adulteration. The importance of preparedness, prevention, detection and response were highlighted when dealing with such a threat. There was also an explanation of different tools which could be used for food safety, food defence and food fraud. This simulated news report shows the importance of moving from a culture of food safety to food defence and described how intruders could get into a sugar factory and carry out a chemical attack. Terrorists have released a video showing an attack on a sugar factory in Spain. It shows how they timed their attack while the guard was busy dealing with a truck driver inside the security booth. One vulnerable area is where the trucks unload their sugar through the vacuum pipes. This is one place where toxic chemicals could be introduced. One theory is that the terrorists watched truck drivers gaining access to the plant using an access card which is kept in an open box. Another theory is that doors which should have been locked were left open. 
Once inside, the intruders could use a map on the notice board to identify the serious areas to attack. Names of company employees might have also provided them with individuals who could be blackmailed into providing information about the factory. Various tools were demonstrated. Some were for analysing samples in solution. I am taking one milliliter of water for analysis specifically for mercury. If it will be uh, positive, there will be no fluorescence of these compounds, so it will be zero. While others used a variety of spectral analysis techniques. Three rapid techniques with electronic nose, infrared spectroscopy and hyperspectral imaging. Others concentrated on the security chain. We can identify uh, any single situation uh, from the security point of view starting from uh, an incident that can be happened outside the, the factory, in the market or in the distribution phase. There were demonstrations about tamper-proof labels. When you put it back, uh, well, the unadvised the consumer will not maybe notice anything, but in reality you can notice that the color has slightly changed because of the color of the packet from the bottom. While others showed the portability of mobile laboratories. Outside the vehicle, we have uh, several technologies. We have a stand, chemical standoff uh, detector and also a radiological one. And with these two equipments, we can uh, get an idea if we have any environmental contamination. Whatever the tool, most depend on software, and risk management software is vital. TACCP is a risk management system similar to HACCP that allows you to, to better know what the threats are for your, for your process and what are the more vulnerable uh, steps in your process so that you can select the most um, um, accurate and precise uh, preventive measures that you would allow you to minimize the, these threats. And in a factory where more than a hundred trucks of sugar can leave in a day, then software that works fast is imperative. The introduction of this software in the company uh, means that they can do the same that they do now in case of alert, but in less than the half requ required time. So it's uh, really beneficial in case of alert because the repercussions are really, really limit limited. One strength of the Eden project is the ability to bring so many experts together in one place. Well, we are an international company and uh, it's good to see that there's representatives from at least 15 different countries that we can compare latest developments in the market, um, think together and try and be united in fighting crime in the international food trade. And when they do come together and work together, this simulated news report shows how food safety becomes food defence. As soon as an intruder climbs the fence, advanced CCTV cameras not only record the break-in, but detect abnormal behaviour and sounds an alarm. Even if the guard is busy, they're alerted by the alarm and can call security to stop the intruder. Access doors are all securely locked. Vulnerable areas are all protected by CCTV cameras. All staff undergo constant training. They know the importance of challenging anyone trying to gain access. The same applies to secure areas like packaging. Anyone not known is challenged and removed. Safety and security signage reinforces the training lessons. Sensitive areas like the hopper are protected by special locks and any attempt to breach the guardrail inside would be spotted because it's alarmed. If you would like more details about this demonstration or any Eden activity, then please go to the Eden website or contact one of the officials listed here. The Firefighters Training Centre at Gersey in France was the host for the Eden Chemical Demonstration. The centre has a residential block and lecture rooms, as well as a wide range of exercise facilities, including a small chemical complex and a train for dealing with transport incidents. Both of these facilities will be used 
during the demonstration of Eden tools. On the first day, there was a display in the gymnasium, so firefighters and other delegates could see a range of tools that could provide help during chemical incidents. All chemical warfare agents, precursors, derivatives, non-traditional agents, and minitics, provided they contain phosphorus, sulfur, arsenic, or derivative of cyanides. It's undealt and is um, capable of analyzing the air um, uh, for the uh, presence of uh, toxic industrial compounds and uh, chemical warfare comp compounds. The GGS can forward communications to the, the first responder, mm -hmm. control zones of where the commander wants you to go. So okay. you could talk to you before and then go, I want you to go here, follow the waypoints in the map. Before the demonstration began on the second day, organisers stressed the difference between a demonstration and an exercise. We are really testing tools so they can meet difference between their real operational procedures and what will happen on the field. A simulated news report outlined the first scenario about an attack on a chemical plant. A huge explosion has rocked the Eden chemical plant and there are unconfirmed reports that it might have been caused by a terrorist who's infiltrated a militant workers group who've been taking industrial action at the site and who threatened to release toxic chemicals. These pictures just in show emergency responders putting on special suits to protect them against dangerous chemicals. It's not known if anyone has been hurt by the explosion, but it is known that the site produces acrylonitrile, which is used for making plastics and which can cause breathing difficulties and even death in some circumstances. If this is a terrorist attack, then there will be serious questions asked about security of the site and also about the safety of the public living near this chemical complex. Ian Cameron, CWW News. The demonstration then started with firefighters sent in to rescue those injured during the attack and tool providers showing what assistance they could provide to those tackling the incident. Okay. Les cartes et les bras. Ne bougez plus. Restez les bras écartés. Les clauses this included everything from aerial reconnaissance to help command and control to PPE, personal protective equipment, as well as tracking devices for personnel. They are recorded throughout the entire incident. So if you are doing, for instance, uh, a search routine, um, at the end um, you can play back all of the the snail trails and see exactly where all of your first responders have been. And detection devices for sampling and analysing chemical hazards. The next day the simulated scenario was based on a terrorist attack on a train using chemical weapons. More now on the metro train attack. Viewers video caught the dramatic explosion which destroyed the train. Once again this all took place under the gaze of a drone which fed pictures back to the command and control tent. Here, the information from the sensors and tracking devices could be overlaid to build up a comprehensive picture of the events as they unfolded. Many of these tools can be used in isolation or they can work together. And a key aspect of the demonstration was looking at the integration of tools and their interoperability. One of the things that I've learned from it is particularly the things with the drones and the BAE system which come together, which means that for goal control, they don't actually have to come together in a room. They can actually talk to each other, looking at the systems from where they are. Like the previous day's demonstration, some victims, commonly known as the walking wounded, could be cleaned while they stood up. And other victims could still be cleaned even if they were confined to a stretcher. To demonstrate what we can do in the exclusion zone and in the warm zone, 
and uh, that we can decontaminate uh, ambulant uh, victims and that we can also decontaminate uh, a victim on a stretcher. So we have all sorts of uh, um, decontamination means, grey decontamination means, and uh, that was very, uh, very clear in this, uh, in this demo. After each demonstration, some people worked in focus groups as part of the evaluation process. If risk assessment changes, the system needs Okay, the system needs to send an alert. So how did the organizers and observers think the two days had gone? Very interesting for me to see how the tools are working together and yeah, what are the gaps, uh, what can be improved and then all the, the project partners which came. So it was really well organized. We saw during the demonstration that some tools that were selected for the scenarios are not adapted to the work that firefighters are doing on the field because it's too difficult to use or it's not enough quick to be used on the field. So this was really interesting. Um, it was also very interesting to have their feedback on the use of the different tools in comparison with what they use usually and also when they discover something new uh, to know if it's adapted or not to their real work on a real scene with a real event so this was really interesting. If you would like more details about this demonstration or any Eden activity then please go to the Eden website or contact one of the officials listed here. The Catholic University of the Sacred Heart in Rome was the venue for two Eden mass casualty demonstrations. The campus houses a 1,400-bed hospital, as well as research facilities, covering everything from molecular surveillance to gambling addiction. The first morning covered the key phases of the C7 demo, the objectives and the various Eden tools, as well as briefings from CBRN specialists like John Galatas sharing lessons from previous incidents. The last number is the 1 to 5 ratio. These have been worried well. People who are, have nothing, but they think they are sick because of the incident. And these two categories, the 80% and the 1 to 5, will run to the hospital. And finally, they will overwhelm and contaminate this was an important lesson, as the Sacred Heart would be running a major exercise while maintaining normal medical, surgical and clinical services for a capital city. Other briefings covered evaluation and ethics, which are especially important for vulnerable people during CBRN events. The ethic monitoring uh, with the, the collaboration with the Ethical Advisory Board uh, analyzed all these documents to protect uh, this, this data and to, to verify that uh, uh, these documents are in compliance with the, with the, with the international or domestic or European law. The demonstration in the afternoon took place in a pre-designated area for mass casualties. This hospital courtyard had been equipped with essential supplies such as electricity, water and compressed air essential for inflating the decontamination tents. It was a brave decision to hold the demonstration under the full gaze of national and international TV, radio and press. But a key aspect of warning and informing the public is to show them that there are plans in place to deal with major incidents and that these plans are exercised. Such demonstrations not only inform the public but both emergency responders and the media can see how each other works under pressure and understand their strengths and their weaknesses. Come vedete, tutto pronto per l'arrivo dei feriti. Scusami. First casualties to arrive at the hospital in the contamination scenario arrived on foot, so-called self-presenters, as expected in real life. Then the ambulances started arriving with more casualties. 
Patients going through triage are colour-coded according to their condition. Google Glasses provided an additional benefit for training. We are using the Google Glass to record uh, the interior exercise. A major strength of the Rome demonstration was the fact that they ran two chemical exercises back to back over two days. One with existing state-of-the-art equipment, the second trying out additional Eden tools. As well as the observers and camera crews, experts also watched the demonstration on the first day and were able to make suggestions about ambulance drivers avoiding contamination and improving the flow of patients through the tents and ensuring international methods were followed. On day two, Eden teams could also show the latest tools for tracking patients through the decontamination process, from red on arrival through to green. Other mobile phone apps allowed patient information to be shared across a number of hospital departments. We assign a code, red code, yellow code or green code, basing on the conscious, on the uh, cardiac condition, respiratory condition and trauma condition. Modern masks allow people to wear their spectacles underneath without the need for specialist lenses in the mask. This hood has two different filtration canisters and the wearer can use Google type glasses to receive messages. For example, uh, evacuate or maybe uh, uh, 10 people coming or you know, a short message. The hood, which is easy to put on, even for those with a beard, also has a stream of air across the visor to prevent fogging. And there's a cooling mechanism to prevent overheating. This was a real bonus, as some people wearing conventional suits in the 28 Celsius heat were clearly suffering after two hours. For observers, being able to see how doctors, nurses and real emergency responders were using the new tools was a real bonus. We got the information from real end users who normally don't use the, the tools and they need exact reliable um, information but not too complicated. So how many victims are there, what was, um, what was happened and what um, do we have to do now with them? I think uh, the majority of the tools examined and tested in the field will make first responders from happy to very happy. Uh, I don't want to name specific uh, tools, but uh, they provide solutions that could make their operational life easier, more comfortable, and if the first responder is comfortable, it operates better and more effectively. As with all Eden demos, evaluation is a key part of the process and this involved focus groups looking at medical tools, personal protective equipment and decontamination, communications and ethics, as well as handling emergency situations. It was clear the two-day comparison was seen as a really strong point of the Rome demo. I think the demonstration was really good. Uh, I think that the, the most precious part in this demonstration, this particular one, was that we could actually compare the state of the art, uh, the procedures carried out in the hospitals uh, as they are today, and compare them with the improved version after implementing the Eden tools. So for me it was, it was really a good uh, experience to see uh, the real world and the world as it will be thanks to Eden tools. Not many hospitals over the world would agree to run twice a chemical exercise uh, one day after uh, the other with all the effort and interruption to the normal activities uh, of the hospital. So the Gemelli Polyclinico should have been highly appreciated for that, for their openness to test new tools, to test uh, new methodologies and to provide us essential feedback to make sure that things that have been developed and procedures that have been discussed during this uh, Eden project are uh, useful and fruitful for their activities because this is the end ultimate objective of the project. So what did the organizers think? The lesson learned is, is that we have to train them and we have to train about the tools but they use the tools and they are so they appreciate the tools they just say they need um, more training. When you're organizing a demo, never panic. Uh, in the days uh, coming before the, the actual demonstration, uh, uh, you might get panicky and uh, 
and uh, worry about uh, about the outcome but uh, it came out really well so my advice is uh, never panic and uh, go on with your job we had uh, two aims first one was to test the resilience of the hospital and uh, we did and the second was uh, to test uh, the capacity of uh, adding tools uh, in the, um, during the emergency and also this goal was obtained. So as night fell it was clear this mass casualty demonstration in Rome had been a great success and if you'd like more details about this demonstration please go to the Eden website. The Eden journey has taken us to Ukraine to see the latest sensors and tools for tracking, tagging and tracing inside a radioactive exclusion zone at Chernobyl, to Poland for a dirty bomb exercise, to meat factories in Italy for food defence against biological threats, and a sugar factory in Spain for chemical countermeasures, to a firefighting college in France to see a simulated terrorist attack on a chemical plant and a dirty bomb attack on a train. Then to Rome for a mass casualty demonstration at a major city centre hospital. It's a journey which has seen the number of end users grow from 25 to 170. It's a journey which culminates in Brussels at the Square Meeting Centre for the final conference and CBRN Innovation Fair. But this is not the end of the journey. Hopefully Eden is the catalyst for future development. We have our views but we are still open to listen to other views on how we should take the project forward. One thing I don't want is to come up to the end of December and like a lot of uh, European projects, we have 200 reports sitting in a repository somewhere in Brussels that no one will ever read again. Another project starts up and they end up reproducing all the stuff that we've already done. I want the knowledge and the actual project to go forward in other mechanisms. And one way to build on Eden lessons is to develop partnerships. If we want to reach the users, we need to have an intermediate platform of experts from the community of users to the users with the help of, uh, of the national networks and regional networks. So we need to build up confidence and partnerships. Europe is about this, building partnerships and try to see how we can network sub-networks in a way. Interoperability was a key theme of the Eden project and the Innovation Fair provided plenty of opportunities to develop impromptu partnerships. So one of the beauties of this is that uh, the robot can deploy the sensor and take it into a dangerous hot zone or you can simply remove it and now it's a man portable device and you can take it yourself. There are also lots of other demonstrations from some of the 44 exhibitors at the fair. It's a very good and convenient um, tool for, for a variety of end users. Be it inspection authorities, be it customs, um, for uh, any control points throughout the food supply chain, for example. So drones for programs um, on TV, we've created those, Game of Thrones, <laughs> Star Wars, James Bond, all those big drones and movie cameras, we built all those, all the original ones. The conference shared the lessons learned from the methodology of the gap and needs analysis to the evaluation tools and protocols that underpinned the whole project. Conference delegates were able to discuss all aspects with the team leaders about the two main aims of Eden, to improve European CBRN resilience and to develop an affordable CBRN market. How do you see the second life? this Eden store. Is this a second life? Uh, is this something that can be sustainable, that can be, I mean to me it should be entertained, maintained and, and made sustainable with a lot of adaptation and uh, introduction of new tools and so on. So that could be a European standard for crisis managers and for end users. As you said, uh, there is a need to mature to still mature this and to, to get to what you, you expect that will be a kind of a reference uh, platform or reference uh, a store or something that will be really operational for, for everybody and, and 
help to build this community of users on the CBLM. Now we need to find the right mechanism and the right uh, budgets. There is a, a wish and a willingness to go on, but uh, we have not yet uh, all the, the big picture to know how to do it. It was clear from the majority of those attending the event that Eden was regarded as a major success and that it was important to build on the legacy of this FP7 project. Uh, this project uh, gave a great opportunity to show uh, to end users the new technologies, new possibilities and give them the information what can they expect during next five, maybe seven years. And on the other hand, it was a great opportunity for tool providers to ask directly end users what they need, what they want. So I, th I think, I believe, this is the main advantage of this project and its legacy. We have the proof on the field that uh, tools which can be linked to a chemical crisis can work together, can be connected and can also improve things. Thanks to the Eden project, for the first time we consider the food as a chain as a critical infrastructure, so we understand the traffic is real and so we need to protect our food uh, supply chain and so the legacy is that uh, we are going to establish a network uh, of practitioners that will deal with the food defense issues in all the Europe. Uh, I think the legacy of Eden is we've demonstrated you can improve CPRN resilience in an affordable way and perhaps more importantly an increased knowledge base and innovation and skills within Europe. And if you'd like more details about any aspect of the project, please go to the Eden website.